So then, we are back with more understandings from the time of the Second Tabernacle Services, where we find in the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Tzayelic lineage. So then, we can understand the time of the end, as period Shiahu the prophet. We find layers of understanding of the Spring Feast, the Autumn Feast and also the returning of the cities of the Mishia laid the waste for many centuries. As we read then Yerushiahu, we then establish very precisely the time when the Mishia himself was involved with the Spring Feast found in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, and that's how you then count the times and the seasons through generations and generations. And then we establish the Mishia completed the Spring Feast and then we are awaiting for the autumn feast. So then, what can we understand as far as the trade of the time of the restoration period? Let's then start very simply with the word restoration. Restoration does not mean modification. Restoration simply means placing back areas where it used to be without any modifications. So then, how then the Messiah or the Savior handled himself while he was completing the Spring Feast? We can read sections of it and in many of his conversations with his people he obviously pointed the situation regarding tabernacling. However, let's then evaluate what's going on in the world as far as, as we can understand tabernacling. The first tabernacling of the second tabernacle services was then found on the land of Cush. That's where then Yahanan ended up at because of the persecution after the Messiah then ascended. So then, with these in mind, what was the objective of this first holy city on the land of Cush? Yohanan knew there were then seven cities of Asia Minor active during his time. However, those places they were in sin. The spiritual situation of Asia Minor during the time of Yohanan was extremely dirty because the sins were involved with the holy cities. Yohanan couldn't get through Asia in the area where those seven cities were at. Thus then he went very far. So then, as we can understand, for instance, there is a situation regarding the many facets of Nahashatan. You find a facet of a destroyer, a facet of slanderer, and then you find a facet of precision. Thus then the dragon. Dragon simply means precision. Let's not try to make the dragon evil. Dragon is not evil, it's simply precise. So then, because of these, what was then the objective of Yohanan? Yohanan was beloved. As you can read, he was a Shaliak and he was with the Messiah. However, when we read his writings, he was very soft. He was a person not like Shimon or then Shaliak Shaul. But he did have the understandings of heaven and he then recorded them. However, Yohanan did not have the strength of making combat in the spirit in an area where then is a region set aside for the dragon. He couldn't stay around the area of Asia Minor during his time. And there was persecution in many sections of the land. So he went far, very far. He ended up on the land of Cush. 
and he was then obviously very nicely received. Thus he instituted then the first holy city on the land of Cush. And that's why then you find Yerushiahu the prophet making mentioning Yerushiahu chapter 1-8 of the land of Cush. You find then the seasons, you find then the Shabbats, you find then the sounds of the shofars on the land of Cush as given us the understanding of a situation that went on during the second tabernacle services and then the reflection of it during the time of the restoration period. As we read, for instance, some prophecies of Yerushiahu, you find that it was taking place in during his time and then later on. As we read Daniel, you find that then the situations taking place prior of the ending of the thousand years of the Messiah and then taking place once again during our time. So you find reflections of these understandings and then Shaliak had mentioned the shadow prophetic events. <laughs> shadow is some sort of a reflection. You have a situation, later on you have the same situation in distinct times. So then, based from this understanding, then the absolute certainty of Yahanan being on the land of Cush you find in Yerushiahu. Thus you understand when he was at this place and then he went out of this place. Later on came the thousand years of deceit known as the New World Order. Then from the east, then the Hashatan went to west to do his thousand years of deceit. He created his own savior, his own scripture, his own time. Thus was then his reign for a thousand years. The problem is, has ended. So he must return once again to the east. That's where then nations started at. And they must understand the holy instructions. So then, what else can we say of this period of restoration? It's not only the holy cities that are returning. The holy cities are related with Ibrahim's second son, Yitzhak. Thus, tabernacling. The first son was Ishmael. He was very beloved. He was the son of Ibrahim and Hagar from Egypt. And, obviously, most of the Arab nations, they can trace back their lineage from Ishmael. The Holy Quran, for instance, when you read, you understand there are many references. And then tracing back to Ishmael. Because of this, what do we understand as far as the trade of this time of the restoration period? Let's read a section of Yerushiahu the prophet. It was explained before. If we are reading the 23rd chapter, does not mean is the chapter before the 30th. We don't go by numbers. You go by the content and context of each of them. When you are reading, you have to understand the times and the seasons based from Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Understand how the prophets were explaining those prophecies, if it's related with the time of the prophecy, the prophecy itself when it was taking place during the time or it's a reflection later in the future. In any prophecy when you read you find these. So let's then understand the 23rd chapter of Yerushiahu the prophet. What can we find? In the ninth verse. Host crowning then the merchants are chief traders. T-R-A-D-E-R-S Chief traders who's then are very weighty. Reading from a transliteration of the word word by word from the Holy Hebrew you have to read properly from right to left. 
then we understand weighty. The word weighty simply means authority. That's how we translate this word. Who has the authority of trade ever since the time of Ibrahim? You find then the first son, Ishmael. So then, let's understand then the confusion that goes on with militants versus those who are then from the lineage of Ishmael. Can we say very precisely they must receive the anointing of the first son? Absolutely. And there is a mixture on the West regarding the similitude of one side. You'll find the East, the sons of Ishmael, the Arab nations. They must receive the anointing of the first son and do the trade during this time of the restoration period. On the other side you have the West, related with a thousand years of deceit, where they have concocted their own instructions, concocted their own teachers, concocted their own way of worship, yet they reject the holy instructions of Moses. So it's a deceit. Whosoever believes in the holy instructions from the Tzayelic lineage never under any condition should reject the laws of Moses. So these couple of understandings are then clashing at each other. On one side you have then the anointing. They must receive. There is absolutely no question. The Creator has instructed His prophets write and record His intentions must be completed. On the other side there is a time of deceit. This time has expired. The West is no longer relevant. Yet they do have yet the say-sos in many areas. But per the holy instructions the West is not relevant any longer. So then what can we understand the mixture? On one side you have then the West trying to extend the time of the seat, trying to extend the scandalized way of living. They're trying to extend then churches and junk. They're trying to extend their own understanding of the instructions for their own use, for their own conveniences. On the other side you have then the people from Ibrahim. Tabernacle is a sad situation, and the land of Cush must return. Then the cities of Asia Minor must return. But then the sons of Ishmael, they must receive the authority of trade. These people are the first traders ever since the trader himself was involved with humanity. Ezekiel 37th chapter you find very precisely the restoration of the sticks of authority of the first son and the second son. So then they must be joined. What is the problem at the moment? You find the West mixed with the East. That's where then the problem starts. So then, how do we sort this through? very wisely, very simply. Places, for instance, where they have dangers, such as this ISO group, or whatsoever they have to name it, per the Koran, the Holy Koran, what can we learn as far as being generous, being hospitable, being respectful and do what the prophet of the Quran has stated it. First we then evaluate wisdom, understanding and the fight part of it is at the end. What is the wisdom then involved with this? 
nations who do have the understanding of the holy instructions and they understand very precisely east and west and what these mean what would be then the course of action so then a person is in line with the Quran and the holy instructions at the same time without mixing them both simply generating a path in each country of conflict for the protection of civilians these would show both of those holy instructions such as the Quran and then the holy instructions of the Tzayelic lineage the first and second sons scriptures now if one tries to destroy the other they would not go very far each of them then destroying their own instructions providing a path simply means securing an area in each of those countries in trouble for the purposes of not destroying each other simply protecting the civilians and do what the instructions are saying for them to do neither the west neither the east is doing this they are trying to eat each other alive and both of them are scoundrels they are liars in this combat field where neither of them they read the instructions and they are not hospitable they do not understand each other and they put arms before wisdom makes them both stupid I want then to do what the Quran states and also the Itzayelic lineage first giving God a chance to do his work because he must have people to do the work now if these people they jump to each other's throats every time there is a problem then there wouldn't be people left to do the work would it let's be frank the thousand years of deceit is already gone was from 1009 to 2009 this time of deceit is gone we are shifting our focus in the East and the leader of the trade of the East at the moment is China so then the leaders are then united in Paris France France we understand is going through a lots of financial trouble they are nearly bankrupt US is bankrupt Great Britain is nearly bankrupt now let me ask you this these nations coming together and involving themselves with the war war is throwing away money there is no other description for it some nations they prefer destruction rather than rebuilding let's ask ourselves should these people be concerned with rebuilding their countries or throwing away money Obama is trying to form a coalition of countries but let's understand extremely precisely and absolutely right what is the intention of the United States it is the control of the area they are not trying to promote economy they are not trying to promote peace 
they are not trying to promote understanding amongst friends for the purposes of trade. U.S. is a very young nation prone for destruction. Let's give an example. Gulf War, some 10 years ago, plus. Was it not then said, then the area of Iraq had then weapons, highly destructible weapons. Now they invaded it, they destroyed, they murdered, and they couldn't find it. Was it really the weapons they were searching for? No. It was the problem with the petrol. The exchange of petrol for USD. Then Saddam at the time very wisely began to have his own oil sold in euros. Or then the monetary system other than using then the USD. There was another monetary system of Europe he was using it. There was not the USD and petrol. Generated a whole lot more trouble. So then, besides this factor, because it's so long ago, what went on with the Pentagon in 2001? The United States could not count. They had no idea where 2.3 trillion was then misplaced. Then U.S. was informed by Rumsfeld, Donald Rumsfeld, 24 hours prior of the incident of those towers over there in New York. Quite convenient, isn't it? They couldn't count this money and they placed a bomb in the Pentagon financial department. The U.S. has murdered their own people only to cover up the loss of the money. So you must understand we are not dealing anymore with a nation that used to be gentlemen. You are dealing with the highest scoundrels of this planet. U.S. government doesn't care. What they want is the control. The control. They want to control. Quite incredible. U.S. then has influenced France, Germany, Australia, and they are bound to do this work. Are they going to fight against the militants of Islam? Or they want to control those people and extend their own times of deceit? They have to ask themselves. When those journalists were then beheaded, plus the uh, British aid worker, some people were absolutely shocked. Yes, those murders were very brutal, but trivial in the area where they were at. There are many countries such as Northern Africa, they destroy people with chainsaws, with axes, with knives, with guns, and many other ways. Why they were so concerned 
with a couple of journalists and then an aid worker. That's how those people they deal with the scoundrels they find. Now, do we want to change those people? If we want to change them, then we are wrong. We want to institute our own ways of living upon others. If their laws are to destroy people when they are found what they should not be doing, then we are dealing with their laws. In the United States, they take scoundrels, murders, thieves, I'm not talking about a White House. And there are plenty of thieves and scoundrels and so on in the, in the White House. But the U.S. uses a huge amount of money then to gather these scoundrels and thieves and liars and murderers and they put them in hotels paid by the government. It's a way of doing it. Northern Africa, for instance, a person steals, a person is hanged. You don't have to have expenses with scoundrels stealing. Ah, because it's not humanitarian. It, it's not the point. You're dealing with cultures. Some cultures, they can't stand scoundrels and liars and thieves. They must die. Should we go over there trying to impose on them our ways of living? No, you have to build hotels or penitentiaries and then you have to put them there. And they say, for what reason? I want to then give them provisions every day for then doing nothing? No, get rid of them. Now, a couple of journalists and an aid worker. Then the United States has found a way of mixing their miserable economy. And they have then, unfortunately, for quite some time, they drag the others along with themselves based from these people that were beheaded. And they get self-righteous. And they don't care if they are dealing with Easterners, if they are the sons of Ishmael or not. They want to control the area for their own benefit. Extend a thousand years of the seat. Those journalists and the aid worker, they were very much aware of the laws of the land prior of engaging in what they were doing it. They knew they were dealing with Islam. Islam is not like Mambi Pambi Christianity. You go there, you screw up, you ended up hanged. That's how you heard it. Or sometimes you get shot. Or you then, you get beheaded. Were they aware of it? Yes, they were aware of it. They went anyway. At their own peril. Now, how many nations are involved because of these people? Thirty nations. They want to impose Western ways of living and they won't take it. The Mideast 
is in a revolt because of the youngs, because of the Americans. They have foreign policies absolutely miserable, and they impose their ways of living on others. They should take care of this problem on their own. The problem is their economy is bad. So they drag the others and then hoping for the future some sort of a miracle to take care of their own problems. Such as what they did in Pentagon. So let's read the Holy Instructions. Read the Koran. Understand then the sons of Yishmael. Understand Islam. And read the Itzaelic lineage, the second son, Tabernacle. And let's do what those documents are saying for us to do. But if we destroy each other, then there is no wisdom in it, does it? Providing a path. This is what they should be doing. Because the Creator Himself is involved with His Holy Instructions. A pathway from the mountains. Securing a corner over there in each of those countries. If civilians they get threatened, they have to go there on their own. Nobody is going to go over there in the mountain where there is danger to catch those people. No, they have to walk and get to the safe place. Once they get there, if the safe haven is then invaded, then the soldiers protecting it should fire back. So they understand there is a limit. They are there to protect civilians. So they can understand there is a Koran to be read. And there is the instructions to be read. Now, if both of them don't give a chance to God to do His work, then what is the outcome other than indebting themselves with them further? Each of us should answer this. Stay tuned, much more coming up.